Nick and Blake are always talking about how to improve the user experience of something. Audible has an amazing user experience, and I'm speaking from experience. I've used Audible to listen to audiobooks so I can increase my knowledge, and you know what? So can you. Listen to books while you're busy commuting, cleaning around the house, or when you run out of other Human Factor podcast episodes to listen to. Go to audibletrial.com slash humanfactorscast to get a free trial and, you know, support your favorite podcast. For a new customer, they'll give you two books to start out with, and after that, it's only fourteen ninety five a month. But you get one audiobook a month. Overall, you're spending less money on an audiobook. If you love listening so much, then you can't wait for the next month to come. You get 30% discount on any other audiobook purchase you make. And you can cancel your subscription at any time. But those books are yours to keep. Let them know Billy sent you by going to audibletrials.com slash humanfactorscast. Thanks. Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome, joined today by Billy Hall. Hey, guys. How's it going? And Blake Arnstorp. What's up, everybody? Oh, man. Hello, guys. Welcome to another week. Yeah. Are we excited? We're talking about Thanksgiving. I love goodness. Big Turkey and, Day. Big and Turkey Day. The holidays and uh, everything exciting associated with the holidays. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I love the holidays. How about you, Blake? Oh, yeah. I Thanksgiving's mean, probably the best one of the year for me. Yeah. Yeah. Is it your favorite? It's my favorite. I mean, you're getting around to eating a bunch of food, hanging out with your family. It's all good. Oh, yeah. Great turkey Even dinner, good food, whatever Martha Stewart recipes are out and available. It's amazing. <laughs> yes, sir. You must have a good family. Oh, they're insane. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a good family. I love them, too. Oh, yeah. I love your family, too. Yes, uh, your family I know are you do. You are winners. always welcome over at our house for Thanksgiving. I'm going to knock on their doors, and they're going to look at me weird now. <laughs> we didn't invite you. <laughs> what are you doing here, Billy? Oh, I have man. a sleeping bag under my arm, and they're just like, I don't know what's happening here. A giant trick next <laughs> so, so before we begin, uh, I just, again, want to thank our listeners for uh, all the support that they've been giving us. Absolutely. Um, all the feedback. Keep those reviews and emails coming. Mm. Uh, and the Patreon support. Mm. We love it, especially when you support us financially. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> keeping the podcast going. Um, so, I mean, you know, uh, remember that you can always just send us an email if you have any questions about the show. Uh, or they could be short stories or comments. We love mm-hmm. hearing from you guys. Definitely, definitely. Um, that's humanfactorscast at gmail.com. Uh, and a couple of our upcoming shows here, we got Human Factors of Theme Parks, uh, Psychology of Color. Um, you know what? We would love it, actually, too, if you guys would send in your uh, – the holidays are coming up, and it's the gift-giving season. So if mm-hmm. you guys pick up anything cool on Black Friday, which we'll talk a little send bit about Send us today. one. <laughs> well, yeah, send us one. For sure. But also you can send us your review of it or any like neat sort of experiences you've mm-hmm. had with any of these tech devices that are coming out here. We'd love to hear from you. Billy. Yeah. What are we talking about today? The psychology of Thanksgiving. This is a weird topic. How so? Yeah, which, I mean, there's how. I don't, I don't even know where to begin. It's a crazy right. one, right? There's, well, there's a lot of like uh, psychology and Thanksgiving are not two things that you would typically sort of associate with uh going together right you think thanksgiving and you know it's one of those mundane sort of every year things that you don't really necessarily think about you know the i mean we all know the reason behind it Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. well i I, let's hope we don't celebrate that still because some people get upset about it now yeah no and i mean rightfully so i mean we came in and took the indigenous indigenous people's home and yeah Said, this is ours now. That's like if I came into Let's your apartment. Let's have dinner together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like if I dinner. came into your house, grabbed all your food, and been like, just, just sat there eating it, and you want some too? Yeah, exactly. So, so I mean, but <laughs> but we've turned it into a positive spin. Right, uh, right, right. And it's now about, what, giving? Gathering, family. Giving thanks. Yeah. Um, gratitude. Yeah. All these sorts of interesting concepts. Positive feelings. I mean, yeah. like, I remember that this holiday was always big for me because... 
I, uh, even when I was living in Texas, I was far away from any form of family. And I used to gather people up at my college campus together who didn't have a chance to go home or were foreign exchange students and didn't understand or whatever. That's really cool. And we used to do an orphan Thanksgiving and it was kind of a potluck thing. And I would make a big turkey and a few of the, the cornerstone type of stuff. And we would all sit around in my tiny little apartment. Like 20 of us was the largest number we had and play party games and talk and try to breach language barriers and that was the idea of it we were gathered together under a common idea we were all in college we were all without our families and it was the time to get together and be thankful for that that's cool what uh, family away from family yeah that's a that's a cool tradition Mm -hmm. orphan thanksgivings man they still happen a lot (laughs) blake do you have any thanksgiving traditions that you uh oh for sure so it it really comes down to food for us so every year we have to make i think it's like four types of stuffing for wow. each different person. Yeah, like some people like it with onions, some people like it with white bread, some people like it with, with oysters in it, believe it or not. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Slow your what? Roll. Whoa. Some okay. Yeah. Dirty southern stuff for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it's just always, I've actually gotten to like split it up between my mom's family and my dad's family the past couple of years, and I just love doing it. Oh, it's that's cool. nice. That's nice. Yeah, that's getting to know everybody. It's fun. I don't. I don't really have any uh, Thanksgiving tradition other than stuff my face with whatever food is available, and that's the American American dream, right? <laughs> Just stuff in your face. Looking How many people itis. gather up on your Thanksgiving, though? Well, it depends. Like you know, it depends. It depends. No, a couple like for a couple years, I just didn't have the funds to travel, and right, so right, right. you know. It, it, Things got crazy, and mm. so, but I mean, usually I spend it with my folks. Mm-hmm. Just my folks. Mm-hmm. I mean, like never uh, a big family gathering. Yeah, usually me, it's like ten or twelve people. How about you? Like oh. average Thanksgiving gathering. Well, it kind of depends. Like sometimes it's it like, depends. Oh, uh-huh. it's, were we not doing that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's just like the close family. But in the past couple of years, I actually now have a bunch of families on the West Coast. So it was like twenty people last wow. year. Wow. And like all their friends coming in. So it was like orphan Thanksgiving for me. Right. I hadn't like met any of this family, but usually it's a lot of people. Nice, nice. nice. Well, we have a lot of. We usually refer to our content as meat. Meat. I'm gonna say we have a lot of turkey meat to oh. get to today. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> God, can we be really any quick more? though? Before we start, I want to ask you guys: What are you thankful for in design? Would it help if I started? Oh, I'll start. <laughs> no, okay, no, go, we're no, 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 no. The new guy to start. We're gonna go, get go, the go. new guy to start. So this is gonna be super specific because I'm taking a design class right now. Oh. But and I have no affiliation with Bohemian Coding or anybody. Bohemian but I, Coding. How yeah. much did they pay you to say that? Oh, nothing. No, but uh, <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they totally paid you to say that. How uh, much? Okay, so I say so say what you're gonna say. Did. Uh, Sketch three. I'm so thankful for that thing because usually, like designing <laughs> UI and stuff, I would have to know a lot about Photoshop or uh, mm-hmm. Illustrator. And mm-hmm. for a lot of the projects I've been doing, like building mobile apps, this has saved me. Just is so that quick. what Bohemian Coding is? Making mobile apps? No, they make a product called Sketch three, oh, and it's just it's like a, a very quick style. Um, like mock-up tool, but it has a lot of features like Photoshop and I Illustrator. The segment of Human Factors Cast is brought to you by Bohemian and Coney. You know what we should ask? Maybe they'll do that. Right up there oh, with Tesla. Send us free Teslas. Billy! We'll, we'll do that. What <laughs> are Oh, Teslas, yes. Yes. Tesla, please send us those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you thankful for in design? I have to be honest with you. Um, I mean, you have a unique perspective, right? You're right. not in the field like us. Right. I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't even know much about what you guys did or how design actually works until a few months before the show even started. But I got to be honest with you, I really enjoy the fact that we do this show. How much did we pay you to say that? <laughs> so much. <laughs> no, but real talk for a minute here. I'm really appreciative of this show because the problem is, and I realize this and I've talked to people about it, when you get into computer science, right, you think you're going to just do coding. And that might turn a lot of people off. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to be a coder. I don't want to just work with those computers. I don't want to just fix and make computers. But you guys do so much more than just fix and make computers. And I'm learning about the idea of the art and the beauty and, and, and the trials and tribulations of being a designer and all these other facets of jobs and architect and things like that in these jobs, in this podcast. And I think that's really great for other people to learn about as well. Well, we're sure thankful for you because yes, sir. You, you bring the voice of the people who aren't in the field. Right. 
you you bring that unique perspective to us and go, hey, wait a minute, what what the heck are you talking about? Bring it back down. Right, right, right. So we're thankful for you too. I think if I can get one person to start this job who weren't actually into this sort of stuff, just to look into classes like that, I think we've accomplished a lot. Oh, 100%, right, here, man. Here's your 20. Um, you. So what I'm thankful for, <laughs> what I'm thankful for is people in our field, not like us, we don't challenge. I mean, we might, but I'm I'm really thankful for the people in our field who don't just look at the, you know, you know this is the way things are done. Mm-hmm. I like I am very thankful for the people who are out there going, this is how it's done. Why is it done that way, and how can we improve upon it? And I guess we all do that to some degree, but the ones who really contribute, you know, the most headway, I'm I'm thankful for those people. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. for sure. They paid me about fifty dollars to say that. So uh, who did though? Oh, them or is that them? Them. them. Ooh. All right, let's jump into this stuff. What do we got? Right. Um, okay, so so why do we even give things? Is there an underlining psychology behind it? <laughs> if there wasn't, we wouldn't be doing much of a show. I, I think <laughs> you might be right. That's a great point, Billy. He's on to us. <laughs> he is. It's I'm like seeing through these secrets of yours. It's it's like everything we talk about relates to psychology or something. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. I know. Oh man. Mm. So I mean. You you have in the notes here, Blake, about free will. Yeah, so this was a super interesting article you pointed me to on like Scientific American, I think, and it was drawing this connection between like gratitude and giving thanks and free will, which is something I just didn't really expect at all. And oh. I guess like what researchers were linking across a bunch of studies they had done was that being able to experience emo- the emotional states you get with gratitude, so that kind of like really positive feeling you get from either like accepting kindness or mm-hmm. giving it out, mm-hmm. is only available to people if they like really believe that the others that, that are like giving them or being kind to them are not doing it with some kind of background motive. So I'm not paying you. I am not, uh, what, what was the coding company i'm not paying you <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are not thankful for them because they are paying you uh <laughs> <laughs> which they are not well i mean like yeah i <laughs> so get it thankful. so the idea of it is is you're doing this out of the kindness of your heart or because you care about the person over the idea of i care about you so care about me type of situation yeah right, right. like i think you you said that you were gonna get me a gift and i you were candid with me and you said that you were just doing it so that i would get you something in return oh yeah no that's yeah. totally okay. the reason right. i was kidding so dude. this this oh yeah <laughs> yeah kidding. sure you were i was kidding you, you say around. you're kidding but that's how you really get a gift no nah, i absolutely your track record you still <laughs> haven't gotten me a birthday present so i know your track oh, record ain't oh, good. oh man all right well <laughs> Who paid for most of the podcast equipment? <laughs> I paid for a third. I of paid it. for the cables. <laughs> oh God, the cables! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, okay, all right. okay, okay. So, 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 <laughs> and this is interesting. So, they also mentioned that gratitude, uh, and and sort of this uh, unconditional gratitude, can give even like any type of relationship, be it romantic or friendly or you know whatever it is. It, it's kind of a booster shot. So. If I do give you a gift out of the kindness of my heart, not for one in return, Billy. Right, right. Then it's kind of like a boost. Like, wow, you really care about me. This is, and it reinvigorates our friendship. So what does it say that you weren't going to get me anything? You said so yourself. I'm not getting you anything, Billy. Is that not, is that like the vaccination of saying, you know what, Billy, I wish you would die in a fire? Could it be reverse psychology? It could be reverse psychology. Yeah, reverse psychology. Oh my gosh. I could be getting you something. Who knows? (laughs) Uh yeah so so yeah that so free will that's, that's <laughs> free cool. will but didn't you think it was a li- just I don't know I have to harp on this one a little bit I thought harp it was on a, it a little crazy in in a good way like I don't really dispute the fact but that just being kinder the people are receiving it has effects on you in a multitude of ways I mean it makes sense right that that's that whole feeling of reciprocity mm-hmm. right we yeah. talked about that on an earlier show right, right right you give me something I give you something but yeah. It's it's uh it's it's more basic than that. It's like, um, well, can, Abraham, you, can you ever really do it? Just well, to be... Abraham Lincoln said it the same way. He said to I don't remember who it was, but he said, "Hey, there's no such thing as a altruistic mo- altruistic thing." He was, and then when they were going down the cart, they saw a turtle on their back. He gets out of the cart, flips the turtle over, takes it off the road, puts it in the grass, and the turtle goes about its way. And then he had turtle stew. But no, then he said, and then the guy he was riding with said, no, right there. That's altruism right there. You get nothing from that turtle by helping him. He's like, that's not true. I would have been worried about that turtle 
all night if I hadn't helped him. Hmm. But that's really interesting. I had never heard so, that story yeah. before. So is there, yeah, is there really any such thing as being like completely 100%? Well, I mean, if you look at it on the overall picture, I mean, like, you and me are friends, Nick. Well, we try to be. Yeah, we're friends. And and Blake's a new friend, but you and I have been friends for a long time. So the idea of it is is that there has been hundreds of little things that you and I have done for each other that we don't even think about, you know, forgiving someone for talking out of turn. Oh, yeah, no, we definitely don't think about those. You know, the fact that you forgave me for that one time I hid your wallet. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Let's not. All right. <laughs> oh. This is not the venue to talk about that. <laughs> What's the next question? <laughs> talk about the next question. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, no. uh, okay. So how does free will come into play? So we'll tie this back a little bit to the research, as I mentioned earlier. Uh-huh. So they came out with, it's not necessarily a model, but that's kind of how I phrase it, is uh, just this series of levels of how you experience gratitude, right? Uh-huh. So it's re- it's always related to the person who's receiving it. Uh-huh. Like, what was the cost of the person that's giving you this this kindness? Was it is it really a big deal? Did they spend a lot of time? Is it like a, a painting that I drew you, or something like that? Um, and then there's like the value to you, the uh-huh. person who's receiving it. So it's like that's a super big deal as well. Like, does it really mean anything to me? Um, and they're li- they're assigning an equation. To gratitude. Basically, it's like how you can build it. Or, well, it's funny. So the last part is, so how sincere were the intentions? But the the interesting part is, like, there is this kind of formulaic way that you can think of gratitude, but it's all related to whether that person that's receiving it so, really believes in it. So it's based on the idea of a uh, person-to-person type of situation. Very much so. Like, if I make, if I make Nick here a, um, uh, a macaroni necklace that I worked really, really hard on, he may not appreciate it as, why did you make me a macaroni necklace? There's no value to me. That's no value to him wearing the macaroni necklace. Like, he ain't going to wear that to work. Like, I may, I may see it as a sincere intention. Right, right, right. And, and you may have put a lot of effort into it. Sure, macaroni necklace. But it has no value to me. Right. But if I made him, let's say, a hilt to a lightsaber that I just crafted with a Dremel and some time. Is that what you got me for? I, you still haven't helped me build my lightsaber yet. All right, we need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Let's do a let's do a human factor cast of crafting a lightsaber. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, man. The usability of all the tools we use. I and feel how to like do I it. almost had to run and grab my lightsaber right now and <laughs> and turn it on just for the audience. Wow. And let's not. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So what else do we have in here for free will? Um, uh, ulterior motives, right? Oh yeah. Those are an issue still. I mean, that's really what's going to determine if somebody's going to feel gratitude or really appreciate it is if they think that if they don't think there's any kind of ulterior motive behind somebody's kindness or what they're doing. Right. That's the sincerity of intentions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. OK. OK. I get this. So like you said, just recapping it, it's about the idea of the person and um, the cost of the the cost to or the value to the person of the gift you're giving or the, the, the gesture you're making. Right. 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 Yeah. OK. OK. What's uh what's next? Uh what were these studies about? How did they assess free will and gratitude? So this is where so I'll go through it and I'll make my comments at the end. Yes. <laughs> okay. There's a lot here. Do yeah. you have, do you have some pretty strong opinions on this? I kind of do and I'm going to try and be as objective as possible about it. But That's what we're but about. Anyway. Let's be objective. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, so hypothesis wise, these guys were saying that like the higher belief in free will, so believing that people are good type of thing, uh-huh. you'll experience more. You're more likely to experience gratitude, uh-huh. likely being the key word. Uh, so, what if you manipulated people's belief in free will? If you can, would that change the amount of gratitude they feel? So, this is how they went about doing that. They used uh, just kind of two open-ended surveys. One that I actually have never heard of is the free will and determinate determinism scale. So it's just like a typical liquor type scale. Oh man! Of All right. Sorry, I, I'm already thinking of my 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 notes. Oh, you here. got your retorts. Yeah, I got yeah. My <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so and then they use just a. You're a, gonna measure free will on a liquor scale. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> what's what's a liquor scale? Actually, have we ever gone over that? I don't think we have. <laughs> a liquor scale is like whenever you see on a survey, it's Lick, like. Wait, wait. Sorry, liquor. Liquor. I hardly know the girl. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just got real family podcast in here. 
Oh, as a producer of this podcast, I am cringing over here at the <laughs> emails that I am going to get about that. <laughs> it's Likert with a T at the end. <laughs> Likert. Likert. Like, like licorice yogurt? Can Likert? I explain what a Likert scale is? Please. Yes, please. A Likert scale <laughs> is a, whenever you like fill out a survey or something and right. you, see, you see the numbered, right? Like strongly agree to strongly disagree. Mm-hmm. And each uh, sort of interval is assigned a number, right? One yeah, to yeah. seven, one to five, whatever it is, that's a Likert scale. Okay. There you go. Oh, so it's just so, all those questions I always get with agree to strongly disagree that I play on BuzzFeed? Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All okay, right, so right. they also use like a gra- gratitude scale, same kind of format. Uh huh. Um, so how we they measure gratitude with liquor scale? Uh, I wish sorry, you guys I'm had seen the wow. guys. <laughs> I'm back, guys. This <laughs> is a whole new form of liquor. It's awesome. Rage. I love the new studio because there's an echo and I can like go off stage and just <laughs> yell like this and it just sounds like I'm really angry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really not. All right. <laughs> Okay, so you're probably, probably going to hear great. Nick yell in a second here after I say this. So they manipulated free will by having participants read and or write anti-free will statements. That's ridiculous! I can't believe they did it! Sorry. What's an anti-free will statement? So, that's a really good question. I know they gave examples. Um, so, I don't know, that you just believe people are bad. Those kinds of things. I believe I don't... people are bad. Okay. Oh wait. I'm sorry. I'm I'm missing this on perspective. Like a free will statement is is that I believe people have free will, and then a non free will statement is all people will do bad things so, if given the chance. This is a really good point, actually. So that, and this gets into some of the problems. So the way the way they're really talking about Billy's, free will here. I'm really happy because Billy is slowly becoming a scientist with us, and uh, we're gonna have to get a new guy on the show because he's. <laughs> But I'm not just, outside I'm, perspective. That, I'm not happy about that. But uh, I, I mean, I think it's the greatest thing because he's basically saying, "I'm sorry, Billy. We're gonna have to let you, you go." Know but you're just, you, you know too much. You know too much. You know too much. Um, and then they just right. he removes my heart. <laughs> Let's get yeah. back to this study. In the ninth circle, before we know it. I see. Uh, <laughs> so the, the way they're kind of defining free will is like whether or not you believe people can be good uh-huh. and not have bad intentions behind what they're doing to you. So I. That gets away from like the philosopher's defini- definition of free will, and I don't necessarily agree with what they're measuring. So these people are making ju- uh, statements about everyone else, like everyone is inherently good or everyone is inherently bad type of th- situation? Yeah, it's a little more specific than that, and it is my bad that I don't have examples of those two statements, but okay. that's kind of the gist of it. Um, and so results-wise, I, I mean, they also had a control group who didn't write anything, or they wrote just neutral random statements. Um, and so what they found... People are people. Yeah. Pretty okay. much. Okay. 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 Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm sure these researchers are great. and uh, But I mean... No, I are, have no doubt because there was yeah. four studies run and published. So, I mean, there's something to this. Yeah. I just... I don't know. I, I, I mean, methods are a big thing uh, for me. I, I mean, yeah. get your methodology right. And But, I mean, who's to know? Who's to say? Anyway, well, I, I, mean, I wouldn't want somebody criticizing my work. But, but at the same time, if you're trying to measure free will, you're going to come under that kind of criticism because they even say in like the breakdown article of it and in their own paper, like free will is a very philosophical construct. It's hard right. to at try least, and At least they're aware of that. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, they're going after some some interesting stuff in a scientific way. All right, let's 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 move on to the next point. This, whew, this study is heated over here at the Human Factors Cast table. All right. Um... That is actually a really good one that we went over the last time. But our uh, next question would be: Thanksgiving is great, but and all, but wouldn't be you wouldn't wouldn't being more grateful is that a, is that correct term? Being more grateful all year round be more beneficial to everybody? Can't we just all get along and love each other, sing kumbaya? Have you seen the political state of the Americas <laughs> over the last? Co- we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. I, I agree with that standpoint. I was I was trying to get I my segue king back. My no, you, no, king there was, no, no, yeah, you, right. no. No golden early. crown of segues. No, for too, you early, too early. Too early. I didn't get that on right, that right. head. No one likes slow, so, so fast segues. So gratitude all year round. That'd be cool. Um, so, I mean, being grateful. There, there's a study. Do you do you know? Do you have the source on this? You know I this do is? not. Is this still Scientific American? I feel like this is still Scientific American. I mean, Scientific Very. America has written a lot of articles, so... It's we'll, probably in there somewhere. We'll yeah. get it. All right. Uh, so, the, this article <laughs> uh, <laughs> says that... Uh, let's see here. Gratitude 
has a lot of it's correlated with a lot of really positive benefits for you right so it opens the door to more relationships mm-hmm. uh you know with with um when you thank or acknowledge someone it, it builds sort of that relationship with somebody else uh it improves your physical health which is interesting i'd like to see the source on this but i believe it right because you're you're prone to take care of yourself um, yeah, I if, really wanted to see where that was coming yeah. from, and because it, it kept coming up over and over and over. I, like I said, I believe it, but I want to see what kind of studies were run to do it. You know what the thing about it is that I can't quite hmm. get over with all of this, though. While I was reading these notes, because I read these show notes, oh, um, I'm sure you do. <laughs> no, no, no. You you literally read them as in the car as we were commuting to the studio tonight, <laughs> right? <Evidence. laughs> I know you um, read the show notes. I'm um, just giving um, you a hard time. I, uh, no, the thing about it is, is um. How do we know that we're not just ignoring all the pieces of gratitude all the time? Like if I bring like, you know, if I bring Nick a Coke, he might not even think about the idea of a Coke because we don't get waxy and like, oh, my God, soda. you gave me thirst and nourishment. I, I have a Facebook friend and you are mutual friends with this person who like gushed about their partner bringing them a Gatorade. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, saw yeah, that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was. Like, I have to show you after this. I mean, Blake. like that's a form of gratitude. I get it, but do we ignore <laughs> the hundreds of little gratitude things and just focus on the idea that I got Nick a signed autograph from Mark Hamill? Uh, Is that what you got me for? The for holidays? a picture? No. <laughs> do you think I know Mark Hamill? Do you think I'd be here if I knew Mark Hamill? Probably. <laughs> I'd be hanging out with Mark Hamill on Speedsters and R2-D2. But anyway, do we ignore the hundreds of little things because we're so caught up in ourselves? That's confirmation bias, I think. Yeah. Right? Because you you're you you're only paying attention to the things that uh, don't sort of stand out. Or you're only paying attention to the things that do stand out. Yeah, but how do people actually register that in, this, in these studies? The person walks down the street. How do they know the hundred things of... I moved a couple steps to the left so that old lady can get by without having to move around too much because she's carrying a bunch of bags. How do we measure that? Yeah, again, I mean, that goes back to the problem that I think Nick and I were both having. Right. Because we're trying to measure something so hard to define. Right. That it's, a, yeah. I don't know, and it, we're basing okay. it off just a scale, these, too. Okay, so that's, these, these I, hard, I'm catching up then. You have, to, you have to think about these. So these are uh, psychological constructs, which is an idea that is defined by uh, sort of these... Um, these these methods that we attach to it. So uh, it's really hard to get it to measure psychological constructs because they're not concrete things that we can measure. And so in the psychological field, the best we can do is sort of, it's like our best guess at how we can measure this. Mm-hmm. So Likert scales is not an, uh, a one-to-one analog of how you're feeling inside. Right. It's our best way to represent that as far as we know. And there's, you know, sometimes there's testing batteries that have like a ton of different uh, questions on them that help narrow down how somebody is feeling about a particular topic. Uh, And psychological constructs is a really interesting episode idea. It's very true. I mean, Green Lantern did it all the time. (laughs) 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 It's like a mic drop moment. Right? He yeah, no, imagined he, he, those things he, and mm-hmm. they appeared from the ring. Very true. Like, yeah? Psychological constructs. Well, those are those are like thinking of an item. But, I, I mean, think of like free will. That is a psychological construct. How do you define what free will oh, is okay. in somebody's so mind? Okay, so it's the idea of like morality is based on the idea of... Like morality is based on the idea of what our laws are. If our laws were the idea of like saying hello is punching someone in the face... Punching someone in the face is such a nice thing to do. Like that kind of idea. I mean, that's really borderline, but it's... We're best friends. It's a construction. It's it's a constructive thing, right? Yeah, I mean, you're trying to put parameters around something you can't really understand very well. Mm. So you're trying let's, to make it meaningful. Let's get into some of these other things. So it improves psychological health, uh, right? So we talked about physical health, psychological health. Uh, and, and, I mean, the same thing can be said about any of these. Show me the methods. How do you measure these? Like, is it real? I mean, I believe some of these, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, this at least keeps you guys working. Yeah. Right. Psychological <laughs> health, uh, physical health. I'll tell you the health. one that I don't believe. Which one don't you believe? It reduces aggression. I can believe enhancing um, empathy or whatever. Maybe I'm just thinking of the holidays. Well, I don't know. It Ooh. does reduce aggression. I mean, if you think about it, and you, and you get into a new relationship, everything's great. 
everything's hunky dory. Everything's yeah. strong. There's the honeymoon period associated yeah. with I'm, that. And, and, I mean, and during that time, don't you guys give each other a lot of little kisses, tell each other all the secrets, do little gifts, do fun things together, learn fun stories. You're sharing. You are giving each other forms of gratitude constantly. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I just have a weird thing about that changing aggression because I feel so, like that's a little more of a hardwired, hard, I don't know what that was, hardwired thing. Southern twang like, over there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a mix of Southern and somewhere from Boston. Had. I, get, I believe had. that our idea of it is is that the amount of gratitude you put in and the amount of good th- vibes you bring around us, the hippies were right. Good vibes make it happen. Unlike sometimes, some topics and some forms of gratitude, like talking politics and Thanksgiving. Dang it. Dang it. Yeah, I got was, there. Got there. Uh, dang it. I was going to take it from you. Slice. I was so going to take it from you. Why do we like to talk politics at Thanksgiving? I think it really comes down to a lot of things. There's a lot of things, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, give me that crown back. <laughs> give me that crown back. <laughs> Take it. Anyway. <laughs> if somebody is out there still working on that Segway crown, uh, <laughs> send us an email. We'll tell you where to send it. Uh, no, but um, no, I think it has a lot to do with the temporal proximity to the election. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, it Thanksgiving happens right after the United States election. And so... Mm-hmm. So it's fresh on everybody's minds. Not even just the election, but everything that led up to the election, everything that led after the election. Yeah. It's all over the news. There's, there's still stuff going on. Everybody's either really happy or really upset about the state of the country. And, and I also don't know, new. but my family is always divided. I've got like half and half Republican and Democrat. So it's always just it's, kind yeah. of a clown show. In there. Oh, it's going to be kind of a fun one this year. Oh, uh, it's, I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, this year will be fun for sure. Um yeah, so there's there's a New York Times posted an article about uh, the political divide uh, as we approach Thanksgiving. And it was really interesting because there was uh, they they quote Robert D. Putnam, who's a he's a professor of public policy at Harvard. Putman or Putman? Putman. Okay. Uh, and he also wrote the book Our Kids. Uh, mm-hmm. Who he says he says he says if you went to Thanksgiving dinner 50 years ago, you'd be very likely to have dinner with people from a different walk of life. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the what? orphan Thanksgiving you're talking about. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. how it was. I mean, think about n- not just 50 years, 100 years, 200 years. It was very different. The idea was that you're coming together with people who are not, you know, of your of your culture. You're you're sharing, you're giving thanks to these people that you stole their home from. Oh yeah, well I mean, even think about just how you connect with people oh, now. Being what is ba- that? 1966. <sighs> that's a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Wow. When did Columbus sail the ocean blue? 1942. There you go. There you go. Rhymes. Uh, yeah, it does. Um, but no, he says that, uh, yeah, it was a different walk of life. He says that uh, people surround themselves with the same culture now, and they don't stray too far from the tree, right? So, like, today there are far fewer people who are different from us around the table. It's our family. But I disagree with that. I think. I do, I too. Think, I think... If you, you know, branch off from your family, it's it, sometimes that can be more detrimental to the way you think. Because when you're all in the same household, sometimes, you know, you, you think to get it's that group think effect that we talked about. Or, you know, it could be the rebellious child who refuses to believe the same thing that their parents do. So it, it's almost like a, Blake has something to say. No, that's just me, rebellious child. Oh, Sorry. this is a podcast. <laughs> you, were, you can't just wave your I hand you and acknowledge me. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, I mean, like, I get that idea, but it's also, I mean, I think it's also because of the sign of the times. We live in a world where freedom, uh, where information is freely given and freely taken with the internet and all that sort of stuff. And we can make more concrete, concrete opinions based on everything around us than, and they can be widely different. Like my family watches Fox news and that's all they watch is Fox news. No other news station, just Fox news. Mm Mm-hmm. And then they go on, but they do go on Facebook. And what do they see? All their friends watch Fox News and post things that are very conservative of nature. So think. it's a group think. Me, I have friends like you guys. And I have Facebook. And a lot of you guys post things that are maybe more liberal or more middle of the road type of ideas. And then I am bombarded with these things. So how can I not be influenced by those sort of things? That's interesting. I mean, because the cultural divide in our country is growing and so fewer and fewer americans at uh-huh. least sorry to our friends across the states we don't know what the political situation is in your country because we have i would imagine going there's on. something and similar. i'm sure you guys are paying close attention to what's going on over here because it's just we're a big deal it's just crazy mm. so uh but yeah as, as 
fewer Americans are willing to cross this cultural divide. And if I may take that segue hat back, because uh, here we go. Speaking of that cultural divide, let's talk about the darker side of human nature. What do you mean? Black Friday psychology. No, bum, it was a bad segue. Bum, I'm no, sorry. Uh, I'm you sorry. know, I mean, you could have done better, but you weren't going off of a lot. Let's like, talk about the dark side of psychology. The dark, dark side. The dark side. <laughs> I can see Darth Vader with a lightsaber. I'm here for the doorbuster sales. <laughs> I find your lack of doorbusters sales. I find sales your lack of deals disturbing. Disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to see this fully operational 4K TV. <laughs> <laughs> I have to hand it to you, man. That was a good one. That was okay. a good one. I'm going to keep the hat then. <laughs> okay, so we have so many articles, but this one is from Deal News. Uh, and this one, this was actually just a couple days ago. And this was actually, uh, we were putting together show notes, and I thought, you know, we wanted to cover Black Friday, and they put this out just a couple days ago while we were putting this together, and we were like, all right, let's just give them credit for it because it came out. It was a great article, too, and it was about the psychological reasons why we go crazy on Black Friday. Did you guys see this article? I did not, but I love this first I mean, line. I've seen articles about Ooh. this idea of the psychology of Black Friday, how I always thought it was more of a hunter-gatherer thing. Jump on those deals, jump on those savings, and then you feel guilt afterwards because you didn't get this good. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of it. No, so they they list, uh, I think it's 10, but we only have a couple here. Uh, they, they, they list a couple of reasons why Black Friday is such a big thing and why, why people are... You know, what the underlying psychology behind it is. What is it? And I, I really appreciate this because we're talking about being grateful and gratitude and what it can do for us. And now we're talking about the dark side of human behavior. Let's manipulate That's people awesome. with psychology. In all fairness, all right. it is the next day, technically. That's it, very true. That's true. true. It's, it's, same I, well, it's not the same day. No it's thanks. not like, hey, Black Friday deals start at like 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving Day. So I was like, you know what? It's fair. It's fair game. It's A lot fair of game. people are boycotting that now. A lot of stores are shutting down. They are. No. They are. But let's Good. talk about why Black Friday appeals to us on a psychological level. Okay. Deals feel so good. Oh, put it in my veins. Shock actually hurts. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. This was this was really interesting. Like, when you see an unfair price, you were like, ah, I want that, but there's no way I can get it, right? Like, unless you wait in line, unless you do all these things. Very true. And when you get a good deal, it induces pleasure. It's like, yes. A little I've, dopamine drip. Exactly. I've done, like, I've worked for this. This mm-hmm, is mine. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you I got beat a PS- up that little kid who was helping his mom <laughs> try to get this 4K I mean, TV. This is a year-round thing. You bought a PS Vita for like real cheap. Yeah, it was like sixty bucks. Yeah, and I would love to have a PS Vita, but they're like normally like one hundred and fifty bucks. Whoa! Did you feel physically pained? I felt like oh, especially when yeah. I found out I could play the games I like on my PlayStation Vita. I was like, no. <laughs> So this next point here, limited time sales and product quantities uh, create a sense of urgency. And this is this is very true, right? Mm-hmm. Whenever you hear words like limited time offer, special deal. That gets me every time. The last year. one. Yeah. The, yeah. Last Door 10 in buster. stock. Last 10 in stock. Like, Don't you feel like, more. I'll never get it again. I have to do this now. It induces that anxiety. And you are just like, I have to do this. I have to get it. Um, Am I the only one who feels really disturbed with all the terrible things we hear about having Black Friday that we've adopted the term doorbuster deals? <laughs> I'm literally <laughs> going to bust the door yeah, down to get the door's thing. coming You down. hear about all these people who get trampled or pushed against stores who have physical pain or injury or something like that. And then we started calling them doorbuster deals. That's like if we called like if we kept Zeppelins around and we called them firecracker deals. Firecracker. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> Selling Zeppelin tickets are firecracker deals. I, I, I have a problem with that. I'm always like, why do we call that that? Anyway, sorry. Yeah, no, and it, it has to do with the scarcity of resources. You know, like if you have less resources available, you are going to try to get what you can before they're gone. Right, makes sense. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, doorbuster deals. Here you go. Getting a doorbuster deal or a limited item can make you feel superior and validated. Now, this one was interesting, uh, but I, I guess I can see it from the competition standpoint, right? Mm. So... If uh, the sense of competition actually validates the idea of bargain hunting. Okay. Right? You make it a game. It's gamification. Oh. That is a really sweet I mean, we use it for a lot of different things. Right? Isn't that crazy? Like, it makes you feel like you've won. Get those achieve modes. Yeah. Get more stuff. What else we got? 
Deal teasers and previews drum up anticipation. So so this is when they like show you the ads. This is what we're right. gonna have. Oh my god. And have you noticed they always somehow leak them early? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah. have people leaking them. Oh early, yeah, leaking. Which doesn't make any sense, but yeah. Right. I know. No, it's uh you know, they have to they have to it's almost like the hunter gatherer thing. They have to go out and find which deals they're gonna stand in line for. They have to go out and find which, you know, discover. It's it's that discovery mm-hmm. of the resources. Mm-hmm. Black Friday is just so crazy. Uh, let's see what else I got. Uh, it's become oh we talked about traditions earlier. Mm-hmm. It's be- going out and killing people on Black Friday has <laughs> yeah. become the has, purge of Black Friday. <laughs> I mean, why don't we just make the purge on on Black Friday? Like it really, like appro- that would I mean be appropriate. You I know mean. what we re- we even make better deals, but you have to go out into the purge to get them. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff free. <laughs> Walmart <laughs> just turns into a war zone. There's just oh. one K, one 4K TV right in the middle of Walmart, and it's like Hunger Games, and there's everyone trying to kill each other. iPhone sevens, fifty dollars. Last one Get alive it. gets Get it. it. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, no, yeah, no, but I mean, it. it Make the it, deals it, ever be in your favor? <laughs> That's just awesome. <laughs> I mean, yeah, people. Some people will go out and actually, you know, it's a tradition. Mm-hmm. They eat their turkey and then right. they go out and buy a 4K TV for twenty bucks. I like, just always thought that was crazy. It was a family ordeal to get up the next day or like yeah. get up not even the next day, like stay up all night and then go out at like six a.m. and hit all the spots. Like, you right? see all That's these people deep. who bundle up really cold, like warmly and they just sit out on chairs with their leftovers. It's amazing. Yeah. Do you guys go out Black Friday shopping? Yes. I have never done it. Okay. Billy says yes. Blake says no. Blake, why don't you go? Oh, I don't know. He doesn't want to die. (laughs) I'm not really afraid of people out there, but like, I don't know. I've never really wanted something that bad that I would go out or not. Maybe I just never pay attention to the deals. I might be messing myself over. I'm telling you. And Billy, why why do you go out? I like, well, I I go out because I like people watching. It's like a social event. Yeah, it's almost like a party or an opening premiere of a movie. It's like you go out in front of a Best Buy and people are really excited. They are, yeah, no. You know, but mostly, I I mean, like, I'll buy a thing or two things or maybe even do some early Christmas shopping. But, yeah, I don't really get into it all, but it's like, yeah, deals. And and the atmosphere is really cool. It's as fun. See, that many people at a time would probably freak me out. That might be why I don't go. Yeah, Yeah. that's fair. Yeah, you know, I mean. weird. Well, this next point is for you. Did you set that up for me? I did not. Oh, man. <laughs> Believe it or not. That was a good one. That, I, I'm going <laughs> to give you the Segway crown right now. Uh-oh. I already um, still have it. Get some, Tom Petty. Hey, give it to him. <laughs> okay, give, give it, it to crown. him. Damn, you physical. can just share it. Don't make me come back there. No. Um, I, I told you guys my story about Black Friday shopping on a previous episode. About mm-hmm. how we, like, we, we literally just walked into a Walmart and got it. Because yeah, it was yeah, in the yeah. middle of Idaho. But... Most of the time, I do online shopping, right? And this is what Blake set up so perfectly. He doesn't like people, or, or the, the thought of crowds, really. No, he doesn't like people. He, okay, he, he doesn't, doesn't like people. <laughs> he barely stands us. But check this out. So with all the cyber deals, you have online shopping that appeals to those people who don't like crowds. Right. See, and that plays into, like, Amazon's favor for sure. Oh, Because yeah. I do, I, I price check everything through them now. I mean, to be honest with you. Do you ever use eBay or anything else like that? I've never once. Unless or there's Newegg? like, unless you see one of Dell? those like super good deals, like all. I'm, but those are usually advertised like on yeah. every place you go. Yeah, you know. But Amazon, try to stop the advertising giant that is Amazon. They uh, the deals are always good. Yeah, they also capitalize on this idea of scarcity, right? right. They, they yeah. present these these flash sales. Like this is only going to be a sale for the next hour or whatever, mm-hmm. and people are like, if I don't do it now. I, I will never get this. Dude, and they do that year around. Yeah, they Amazon do. They deals. do. They do. But I mean, like, they especially highlight it during Black Friday. Mm-hmm. They even do like countdowns of how many items are left that you want to buy. Like, and there's only fifty left. There's you know, only that, two. That, right. I, I I can't believe they keep that accurate of a count with thousands of people on their it's website. It's all digital, man. Yeah, I, yeah, it can't update that quickly. As soon as someone pushes the buy button, it updates itself. It can't do it. It can. Really? Possibly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Amazon's a giant. I wouldn't put it past true, them. True. 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 There's there's also algorithms so like if it, if it wasn't able to keep up it would say all right 95% of people who put this in their cart are going to buy it so just take one out of the inventory now. Um I get it I get yeah. it so That's it's a kind really of preemptive point. thing. Yeah. Uh so the last point or I guess one of the other points that we didn't put them all in here but another one is that it's fun for some people right and I mean we talked about gamification and competition right and and I mean And just the atmosphere like I said. Yeah. 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 
uh, this this all like as I was reading this article, it all ties in really nicely with. Um, he did not pay me to say this. Chris Nodder's Evil by Design book. You love that um, book. I do. Yeah, this is like the second or third time I mentioned it on the show, but it's right. it's really good. It goes into like the uh, the seven deadly sins and how designers usually or, or can't not usually uh, like big corporations can use these things marketers. To, to prey on humans by hacking the psychology of it. Oh, for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, the, I mean, marketers will design their advertisements, right, to appeal to these seven deadly sins. So like greed. You you want to get stuff for yourself. Mm-hmm. Black Friday is no longer about buying gifts. It's about buying yourself that TV. Oh, yeah, you're trying to make all your material possessions uh-huh. double. Get I'm yourself sorry, some something. of that stuff I want, you know. <laughs> Treat yourself. Uh, pride. About getting a good deal. It makes you prideful. You want to mm-hmm. tell all your friends. Right. Got that PS4 for $2. Yeah. yeah. Sloth. Staying in the cyber deals. Oh, yeah, Why yeah, go yeah. out when we can bring the deals to you? <laughs> Envy. Envy those that get the deals. Mm-hmm. Right. Anger. Angry when you don't get the deals, so you retaliate and just buy something else. Better get some gratitude to handle that anger. It's crazy. So, I mean, I mean Black Friday is just... Wait. It's probably the worst. Greed, of pride, sloth, envy. You're too short. Yeah, I am too short. I didn't put them all in. I was oh, just okay. Highlighting just points. making sure. They're normal height. I mean, it might have been a thing. Okay. I mean, so. how do you get lust, really? I mean, <laughs> you Tell lust after the deals that you see. That okay. happens before right. Black I, Friday. I, I, yeah. Or the deals that other got that you didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right. So this has all been pretty depressing, all this Black Friday. Yeah, let's each end this on a positive note. You know, there are things. Backed by psychology, you guys have said so that we. But there are also things in psychology that we can do to get the most out of Thanksgiving. How can we get the most out of our Thanksgiving? Tell our audience how we can bring everybody together and sing that kumbaya. Yeah. So Psychology Today put together this uh, article about recommendations for being more grateful. Take take advantage of these traditions, mm. right, in your everyday life. So uh, they have three points and kind of a uh, uh, a friendly note to end on. So let's let's talk about this. So express your thanks to someone who made a difference in your life. Now this kind of goes back to what you were talking about earlier Blake with with the uh, reciprocity with gratitude, right? Like if you if you are grateful to someone, they will be grateful to you in return. Uh, so like for example, uh, in in one study, is this Marty Seligman? Is this the same guy? Oh, uh, I think so. He uh, and colleagues uh, had research participants take a week to write down and then deliver a letter of gratitude to someone they never properly thanked. Mm -hmm. They found that depressive symptoms, on average, declined for one month after the event. Interesting. Yeah. I thought that was cool. I feel like okay. that's, a, that's a stretch. So, so right? I, I know. I, well, but I, I like mean, it, though. I like you know, it. I this like isn't it. an uncommon practice. People in AA and all those types of groups do this stuff all the time. Yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, so, uh, methods aside, I and feel like this has some merit. if it's like, like a well-crafted letter, for sure, yeah. You yeah. spend some time on it. Methods aside, I feel like this has some merit. Um, and, I mean, you know, this, this week especially would be a great opportunity to apply this because think about someone who's made a significant difference in your life or, you know, even even someone – Positive or negative, I guess. You know, if you write them a letter of gratitude, if they have galvanized you in some way because they hurt you, or if they have done something great for you, write them a letter. Okay. Celebrate Thanksgiving. Write them a letter. Um, They also talk about keeping a gratitude journal. And there have been a lot of studies on, on, you know, keeping journals and keeping uh, sort of this, um, if if you track what you do, you're more likely to be aware of it. So, like, tracking your food intake or uh tracking um you know your exercise or something you're more likely to stay on top of it if you know what you've done and where you need to go Hmm. you know i mean like you know what i would like to see just a bunch of anonymous types of gratitude journals just something you can read through you know i think that's what we need on the internet more more positive wonderful things you can look at like oh that's great more anonymous uh I mean, just an anonymous person, so you could put your gratitude up there without being judged for it, and just put it out there. No comments, nothing like that. Just like or dislike, and then go. So that's uh, I'll I'll throw in like a personal touch to the keeping a gratitude journal thing. Okay. For a while, 
I was keeping one and in combination with like meditation, I definitely noticed a difference in just my overall behavior and my outlook on life and those types of things. So I think, I mean, I can't, it's very subjective, but I think there definitely is something to being yeah. grateful to yourself or in practicing it. Cause like just doing it in the holidays or every once in a while, you don't see the effect. I used to keep something along this line, but I made a terrible mistake. I, I made was a huge mistake. I, oh. I did it the other way around. Every time I would get angry or frustrated or have a problem with something that I couldn't control or it's just a person being a jerk type of thing that, you know, on the street, I would write it all out. I would get I thought I was being cathartic and getting it out of my system. Problem is, is I'm making a Landstein record to get mad at again. No, it also works the other way, I would assume. It do, like, I mean, like, I, don't I mean, do personally, it, it didn't work for me oh. because I had an ongoing record of how angry i was at everybody all the time yeah you know like kind I mean? of an in a two problem I've you know? definitely and then when the it got thing. personal with people i saw it's like i remember i wrote about you i, I put together this. words and punctuation and thought about this for a long yeah, you've time like carved that pathway in your brain now you yeah. remember it so vividly because you, then you just it down. go down this little tizzy where you're getting yeah. excited and scared all the time so maybe a gratitude journal would be a better way of going about it than just spewing anger all the time this next point uh is a little cheesy it's it's actually really cheesy <laughs> Uh, <laughs> savor the moment. <laughs> Let's just get to the back of a Hallmark. Oh, <laughs> I just heard the card flip over to see if no, it's we're a trying, Hallmark. We're trying to end this on a positive note. So oh, savor okay, the moment. Okay, okay, so, okay. So, so, so they say that, uh, you know, savoring food, savor your relationships with your people too, right? So being mindful and meaningness, or, or meaningful, uh, being mindful of the meaningful Ness. Wow, that's a mouthful. Being mindful of the meaningfulness will help you sort of, you know, live live in the now mm-hmm. is basically what they're saying. Right? And that's like a super important thing that I think a lot of us take for granted or maybe, I don't know, from my own experience, like working a job and all that kind of stuff, you forget to do that. You're always concerned with what comes yeah. next. So sometimes you have to just try and be in the moment. Now, I, I'm not relig- I'm not a religious person, but they they bring up this idea of grace, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a religious context. Just oh. you know, be. They say uh, that. Let's see here. Ideally, you would involve a meaningful expression or a heartfelt thanks, not just a memorized prayer. For instance, right. consider the meaningfulness of the relationships you have with those in the present, the bounty of food, the opportunity to gather in a safe, comfortable shelter. If appropriate, tap into, uh, you know, if appropriate, tap into the religion. But I like, I like, a, um, you know, as a non-religious person, it's, it's interesting for me to, to look at this and say, it's okay if I still am just grateful for what I have. Cause like for me, anytime I eat, I just, I, you know, or eat with religious people. I have nothing against them saying prayer. It's just, I want to eat now, but, now I I don't know seeing this. It I mean, gave you me can an take it in the kind of situation like if I'm religious and I say grace after every, before every meal, I actually do. I don't physically say it, but the idea of it is is that if you, you came over it. to my house, if you came over to my house and sat down at my dinner, and I was like, hold on, just ten seconds, and we do. It doesn't have to be your thing. You don't have to join in. Heck, right. we don't have to hold hands, and you don't have to say amen. But well, we have to hold hands. You yeah, we have, do. This is. Yeah. I mean, like you know, what are we doing? Um, but you can still be thankful for all the things, like I say, yeah. health, food, happiness, all that stuff. You just take the religious part out of it and just leave the rest. So right. the sentiment is still there. Yeah, I really appreciated this because it's it's not something I ever thought of, yeah. and uh, I'm I'm glad I read this. I mean, it, it leads to more accepting and more open dialogue about it, which I think we need in this world, especially yeah. right now. This is, this one's really cool. They also um, they also suggest. That, uh, that we're still talking about savoring the moment. They suggest it's making so delicious, so delicious, so it. delicious mm. of that moment, especially when you make the dinner table a non-technology zone. That I think is the say most what again, Willis? A non-technology zone. We cannot have our podcast equipment at the dining table. Oh God! Can you imagine that podcast? We eat we Thanksgiving dinner as we <laughs> just. Man, I'm you know, them Republicans. <laughs> them Democrats and Republicans. I love this new studio. This is awesome. This is you know, you can do the same stuff amazing. as the old studio, but you just wouldn't get that good acoustic sound. 
Yeah, but the crew at the old studio might have had problem with my yelling. That might be true. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the behind the scenes crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, no, I just I thought this was cool. No television, no phones. Just the football game can wait. Just enjoy. I know you take issue with this, and you might take issue. I don't know. Man, no, I, I can re- wait. Just spend the time with it. your family. I think uh, that's a big thing that people should do. Is just oh like, yeah. Take a I break. mean, just in day to day too. Like every time I sit down with a meal with my SO, I I tip my I turn my phone off, turn my phone off, flip it over. And push it aside. You know, it's hard, but it's there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was listening to Star Talk this morning, and, and uh, Neil, uh, he, uh, he made, he, he was listening, or he went to uh, uh, like a card shop around Valentine's Day, and one of the cards he was mentioning was, there's no one else that I'd rather sit in bed on my phone with than you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect card for this the, generation. The digital age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. All right, so let's let's move into this closing thought that they have about vulnerability, right? And so they, they talk about all these things, and it's easy to say, hard to do, because they make you vulnerable in some way. It makes you self-reflect, introspection. You know, it, it's, it's, it's hard to express sort of these, these heartfelt thanks, right? We live in a world where we have to keep our guard up with a lot of things. Right. So, so they end with this note, have the courage to be vulnerable. And this week, this week may be one of the most meaningful Thanksgivings you've had in a long time. Mm, mm, Interesting. Mm. I don't know. I thought it was cool. Like, how do you apply this psychology to your life? Right. We always talk about applying psychology it's, to design. It's difficult. It's a difficult thing to do. Like oh, yeah. Nick is Nick. You're one of my closest friends. Oh, thanks man. But every time you're like, Hey Billy, come here. I'm always thinking, uh, what are you going to do? You know, there's always that sense of... I'm going to surprise you with show notes and be like, here you go. <laughs> like, or, or, you know, that sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, we live in that... I mean, that's that's a very rudimentary form of it. But, I mean, like, a lot of times, you know, it's hard to let down that guard in any way, shape, or form. You know? What about you? What do you think, Blake? I don't know. I mean, I, laying down your guard is just a tough thing to do, especially nowadays. I feel mm-hmm. like you have to... I don't, I don't know how you guys feel, but I feel like I have to pretend to be a couple different people throughout the day. With, mm, put on professional, hats. Yeah. yeah, professional podcaster, you know, living uh, the extraordinary yeah. life of Partner. Blake outside of it. Yeah. Partner, yeah. It's, just, it's just a lot of different phases you have to wear, and you sometimes you get lost in the mix. So mm-hmm. then, like being heartfelt, it's almost like you bury it down a little bit. Mm. But anyway, mm-hmm. well, what do you guys think? Are you going to talk politics with your relatives at Thanksgiving? Are you going to keep a journal of gratitude? Let us know in the comments or send us an email. That's got to be it for today. If you want to be featured on the show, we're all over social media. Go ahead and comment on our SoundCloud, Facebook, or Twitter. Or you can send us an email at humanfactorscast at gmail.com. All your questions. You can also get to the front of the question line by supporting us on our Patreon site at patreon.com slash humanfactorscast. Be sure to like, subscribe, review us on iTunes, the Google Play Store, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast directory. We're always trying to keep in touch with interesting topics that you guys want to hear about on the show. So feel free to suggest a way we got some good ones. Blake, where can our listeners find you? You can drop me a line on Twitter at UXChillBro. As always, Billy Hall, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter or on YouTube at Comstar Cleric. As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Nick underscore Rome. You can also find me failing after this podcast. Stay tuned. Thanks again for tuning in to Human Factors Cast. Until next time. It's a- Be sure to stay tuned after the credits. It's great. Epic fail.